Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes Close your eyes um, If you like what I do Leave a review. It's uh, just go to my website, and you can either leave a leave a written review or a video review. If you're feeling extra, extra brave, <laughs> and I'll appreciate it because that's just lovely, isn't it? I just like it. Um. What other things? So I have pretty much completed the website as far as uploading all of my recordings. Saying that there are probably a hundred or so, maybe two hundred that aren't on there. And you could say, well, that's quite a lot, but not really compared to how many I've got altogether. So there's a few of the self-development, self-help ones that are... um, quite short and don't necessarily fit into a category so um, I might add them as well I'm not sure but at the moment pretty much everything is now on my website to stream uh, free and to download and at the moment you can download them for free as well Although, if you're listening to this in two years' time, there might be a charge for the downloads. I really don't know. But at the moment, everything is free. And I'd like it to always stay that way. Because it's what I like. I like that a lot. And today, or yesterday rather, I produced... What did I do yesterday? Yeah, I produced two recordings. I did the, uh, number 300, Let Me Bore You to Sleep. So this is episode 301. I can't believe I've done over 300 recordings of this. Um, just talking about nothing for an hour. It's amazing. Um, I also did, I started to do a more regular Recordings of the relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. I'd like to say thank you to Boston Chicky for your um, support for these recordings. Because when I first started doing them back in 2017, I think it was. I think it was January 2017 might have been 2016 but I think it was 2017 and I did 34 recordings I think it was and that was it that's all I was going to do but as um, Boston Chicky as well as a few other people really um, were supportive about them and you know told me how much they liked those recordings and then in 2018 was it November I uploaded that podcast as well as all my other podcasts onto Spreaker and shared them with all the different podcast hosts out there online and I kind of forgot about that one and I focused um, more on the, I don't even know what I was focusing on back then. Oh, let me boy to sleep ones. And yeah, that was probably what I was focusing more on at that time. Because I'd uh, be doing that since the beginning of 2018. And then, I couldn't figure out why I was getting so many downloads, like overall, 
because I was looking at the podcasts that were the most popular that I, that I kind of was putting stuff onto and I couldn't figure it out. It didn't work out properly. And I noticed that the relaxations, hypnosis for sleep, anxiety and panic attacks was actually getting quite a few downloads like every day. Yeah, I hadn't made any new recordings for, well, at all. And, and I didn't start doing them until I think probably April or May, maybe June last year. I think it was about June time. But at that point, I was getting quite a few downloads every day. And I thought, oh, I might as well just do another one, do number 35 and see if if people would like them and it's gone from there so I've now did number 72 yeah I did number 72 yesterday and yeah I'm really pleased with that podcast it's close to my heart due to my own experiences with uh, stress and anxiety and panic and stuff so I talk about my experiences on there as well as offering um, hopefully useful tips and ideas. I'm not big on the word advice. But I probably do offer advice, but I don't. I try to just offer options. That, that's I give a few ideas and options. So, and I'll talk about the buffet idea, because I had the podcast, The Hypnotic Buffet, and that's what that was based on, in a sense of, you've got the buffet, and you can, instead of me saying, why don't you try the sausage rolls, have you tried the cheese puffs, you know, have you tried the uh, seagull pate, <laughs> And uh, instead of doing that, I just mention stuff. Just talk about stuff. And that was, you know, that's kind of what I do. I just float some, float some ideas in the air. And if you choose to try them on or to test them or to embrace them or to let those ideas sink into your mind, then it's, that's kind of a choice, you know? So that's pretty much what I do with those recordings. That's, a, that's quite a simplistic description but I prefer simplistic I really do and I really I do I value those those podcasts it's got to the point actually where the podcasts are almost like my children and that's a bit weird but you know, I've got the, the let me boy this one, the let me boy to sleep. This is my child, you know. It's now 300 years old. <laughs> but it's, it's my, my baby. It's something that I've created from scratch. Created and, I don't know, brought up and nurtured or whatever, you know. The same was the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast. It's now 172 or 173, something like that, recordings on there. And that was a similar thing. I only did seven to start with. And then people were downloading it. And kept downloading every day. So I thought, oh, as I like to give people, my listeners you who are listening like I like to give you option you know more choice 
instead of listening to the same recording over and over again, which can be really useful. Uh, it's just nice to have a choice, I think. So that's what I've done, that's what I've tried to do with my little babies, with my, with my children. So I've got Let Me Bore You to Sleep, Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis, the Sleep Hypnosis, uh, what is it, the Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety, Panic Attacks, and I've got the Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. So that's four, isn't it? Four podcasts. I've got 35 podcasts, but they're the four that are kind of my babies that I've started from scratch as a podcast, you know, as a kind of... Well, they're all created myself, but there's... Uh, they've almost got kind of taken a life on their own, sort of separate from all my other stuff. And then there's the two sleep hypnosis podcasts that I've got that are the two most popular podcasts that I have online. But that's um, that contains all of the sleep stuff that I do. But they get, some of them get like 800 or more downloads a day, some of those, those two podcasts. So, you know, I kind of like to say thank you to people that are listening because yesterday, I don't even know why really, but I had 4,100 downloads just yesterday. And I had just under 400 the day before, 400, 4,000, just under 3,900 or something downloads. And it's just all grown just since January. I mean, month on month, it's growing, you know, if you look at the, it's definitely upward slope throughout the year, last year. But I think part of the reason, you know, I'd like to thank Natalie and Rachel, who have been sharing my podcasts uh, on Facebook, because I think that helps. I've got, had a few extra people that have uh, added me as friends on Facebook and it's I don't know I'd, I did start the competition for January where I said anyone that posts or you know shares my post on Facebook onto their page we would get entered into a competition where you can win a flash drive with all of my Let Me Boy To Sleep recordings on it. And I'll send that at the beginning of February to the winner. It'll be like a draw. And I haven't had a lot of people show huge interest in that so far. Although I have had, I've had a few shares. I've, I've had lots of shares, but it's been kind of the same people pretty much every time, which I really appreciate. And it'd be lovely to have more but I do understand if you don't want my stuff on your page but maybe the odd one you know maybe if it's a recording that you do like that you that you've listened to and you thought yeah that was that was groovy or that that was useful and maybe you've got friends that might find it helpful rather than just sharing it for the sake of it but if you share it, I don't mind what the reason is. Um, I just appreciate um, the help, really, to reach more people. And although I do reach, you know, I've got um, I've got a few people on Facebook that follow what I do. Most of the people that listen to me online are not on Facebook. Not on my Facebook, rather. Um, so I kind of don't know. You know, I've got people all over the world listening, and I don't know who they are. I don't need to know either, but it's just... I suppose that's why I kind of 
would be interested in getting some more reviews and I know that as some people listen to this would say well actually I've left a, f I've left a few testimonials on a few of your different websites over the years JJ and perhaps I don't want to do any more I've had enough of leaving with I've done enough testimonials and I can understand that but maybe do another one just just for me because this website is now going to stay I've put so much into this current website that I've got it's also costing quite a bit of money uh, even to have the reviews that's a, a separate app that I have to pay for £10 a month added on to the website host so I'm keeping keeping that and I just want to see how it grows over the next year without keep changing so I've, I've got a habit of changing the website hosts which means it messes it up in the Google search and you know search engines they just don't know where I am because I'm there and then suddenly all the page links don't work anymore because I've moved to a different host and there's a different page links so my plan is to just stay on one one just stay with that host stay with the website I've got and keep growing it every day it grows because I'm adding new recordings on there and there's still a loads of work to do on the website and I'm looking to probably change the design a bit as well make it a little bit nicer but that's I'll do that once everything's on there how I want it to be and every now and then I, I, I kind of test out some of the apps that are available uh, I did one yesterday which was uh, sort of to message me and stuff but I don't, uh, I don't really I suppose I could have a Facebook messenger thing on there but again I'm paying for that extra when you can just face you can just like send a message from my website to me so yeah there's, there's a few things I'm going to do but at the moment I'm quite pleased with how it is because I've put a lot of work into it to get it how it is so yeah God, that was boring that really was boring wow sometimes I really bore myself that's when I know that I'm doing doing good work so I'll let you give you an idea what I'm up to at the moment I'm currently listening to not right now while I'm talking to you but I'm listening to Susan Jeffrey Jeffers Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway which is uh, an audio on Audibles or Audible. It's a recording I used to own back in the 90s and the 2000s. So I used to, I owned it on tape, but then I bought it on CD and I listened to it. I remember once I listened to it in um, the garden. It was a summer's day when I was living in the Buddhist community we had this garden outside the back and I was sitting down listening to it on I had my little CD player thing whatever it was well it's probably a big one but you know not big like a little boombox thing and I had headphones so I listened to it the you know, feel the fear and do it anyway now I didn't realise that it must have just been on loop. I must have had it set to just keep playing over and over again because I got completely sunburnt. Yeah, I was out there, I fell asleep. So I was probably out there for maybe three hours instead of just thinking I'll sit down here for an hour. And I wasn't even directly in the sun to start with, so the sun must have moved around even though it was someone moved me around to get into the sun maybe my housemates which would be a bit 
a bit rude or perhaps well no that's why that wouldn't make sense would it let's say someone attached helium balloons to my legs and my arms and I floated towards the sun hence getting sunburned but that that really wouldn't make much sense how would I end up back in the chair that would be silly anyway yeah so I got sunburned and it's kind of the first time that I've been that sunburnt for many, 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 many years. In proper, so you know, not just like mildly, but really. Um, although there was a time back in the heating's coming on so the radio will be start clicking that'd be nice there was a time when it was my dad's was it his birthday yeah it was his birthday and it was in April So I, I kind of just, I turned the heating off, but the radio is still clicking. So I did, I went down to the beach and was reading a book. I wonder what book I was reading. This is during my degree. So I'm probably talking 2008-2009 something like that and I was yeah, more than likely reading a book on counselling for fun and I just sat down and I just sat there it's, I had about an hour you know, I was pretty sitting there for about half an hour, an hour. People were going in the sea. It wasn't even hot. It was warm. But it wasn't like, it didn't seem to me to be a burny, burny temperature. But I ended up with sunstroke. Very weird. So yeah, I think it might be in a combination of the sea air and stuff, you know. So I think the because you've got the the breeze coming off of the sea, it can give a a false estimate of the temperature. <laughs> I'm making that up. I've got no idea if it's true. But uh, oh, when I was a it's because of my skin, you see. I've got, I got this skin. I suppose we all have, but mine is very, very, very. Uh, I don't know what. I suppose sensitive, but red or pale. I'm not sure what you would call it, but when I was a kid. Like very very young probably yeah four three four I remember I got sunburnt really 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 badly and I was out playing with my brothers and with my friends or whatever and I didn't even know didn't even realise until I got home and you know when you get inside after being out in the sun and suddenly everything's like a weird it's like that darkness as you walk inside, like your eyes kind of had to sort of readjust. And I look in the mirror, and there's a clown looking back at me, but without the white makeup, just one big red, was well, a tomato basically, kind of. And uh, although I looked funny, it didn't feel funny. No, it didn't. No, 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 no. So, uh, yeah. so basically, I I have to keep out of the sun. 
I don't keep out of it like a vampire. And yeah, I don't. But I do keep out of it. Partly because I've talked about this before. It's like a, a body image. I've never really felt particularly comfortable to be walking around topless. I've never done it outside of when I was a child. And I do it all the time. But bottomless, I didn't mind. Topless, ooh. Unfortunately, the members of the public and supermarket staff did mind. But when I'm indoors even, I will be topless in the summer, indoors. Andre seems to be okay with it. Um, sometimes, I don't know, it's hard to tell because sometimes he looks, screams and runs away. Other times I see him and he's hiding behind a door and he's giggling, so I, I don't know. It's hard to tell if he's just making fun of me or... But I actually, I do, I sit there Maybe I'm watching telly, maybe I'm on the laptop, maybe I'm making a recording even, and I'll be topless. Sometimes it'll be hot and I'll just have some shorts on, and that'll be it. But if someone knocks at the door, I have to make sure I've got a t-shirt on. Sometimes I take the shorts off just to even things out, but generally I have to have a t-shirt on I will not be seen topless, not by anybody, ever, apart from a doctor. Although the last doctor I went to see, uh, she had to do a, she do, you know the thing where they put it on, put the, steth is it stethoscope? That cold metal breathy thing that they put, it's, it's like attached to headphones. I'm sure she was just listening to music, but she put that on my back and my stomach but she didn't she was quite happy I was going to say I started to take my t-shirt off and I got up to my nipples she said no no you can leave it down I'll just go underneath so I don't know if she just didn't want me to take my top off I think it was I think she got scared I think she was yeah I don't know maybe she was I mean she might have been about to have a lunch, you know, and she didn't want that image in her head. So maybe she was, and I, I was one of the last people she was going to see before it was her lunch, and she's there eating a seagull pate sandwich, and I was like, oh, God, that bloke, what on earth was that? But luckily, you know, the chesty, um, breathy thing lungs and stuff are fine so that was good which is the, the main thing really I guess it does annoy me a little bit though I don't think I'm going to go on so I've had a back issue lower back issue since I was the, the first time I rem in my memory I remember having it and getting a little bit of therapy for it, physical therapy for it, back in 1999, okay? And in 1999, I was slim. And I had this lower back issue, which has gradually worsened over time. I went to a chiropractor, osteopathist, I don't know what they call it, is it a chiropractor? And that's after I, I, the, the lower back issue was getting so bad that I had to stop doing Taekwondo. I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't do the kicking, uh, running around. It was, I remember it was quite upsetting actually. So I went to this, uh, you know, this, uh, throat specialist and he looked at me back and he said no can you put your top back on please I'm feeling ill I said okay 
I have to be rude. He said, no, sorry, but I've just eaten. I said, oh, still rude. He said, yeah, I know, but I mean, you do own a mirror, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, well, you know what I'm talking about then. I said, it's still rude though, isn't it? That's, that's even ruder. I said, well, let's focus on your back. I've only got 15 minutes. I said, yeah, that's another, re that's another thing. How come I'm paying you £45 for 15 minutes? You said, what do you mean? I said, I'm paying you £45 for 15 minutes and all you do is um, press on my back a little bit, get me to stand on one leg and touch me toes, which I found a bit unusual, and uh, and just basically manipulate my lower back a bit. He said, yeah. I said, do you know what, what I could get for 45 pounds elsewhere? And he said, yeah, I do know what you could get. So three doors up, you could probably get a lot more. I said, no, not uh, what? He said, yeah, don't you see the, the the business cards in the telephone box? And I said, no, I'm not, talk I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about stuff I could buy for 45 pounds. I could, that's a week's food potentially. He said, depends, it depends on what. You might want to eat caviar. I said, who eats caviar? He said, lots of people eat caviar. It's a very popular food item. Anyway, he said to me, the lower back is wear and tear. You know, it's just I'm getting older. And this is five years ago, so I was, what, 30, no, no, 40, 44 or something at the time. And he said, yeah, it's wear and tear. It's just just standard stuff. And I said, okay. He gave me some exercises to do. And uh, he wanted me to keep going back every couple of weeks or every week, paying 44, 45 pound time. 15 minutes and I just I couldn't I just couldn't afford that it was just ridiculous but at least I kind of got a, a diagnosis as it were you know about what's going on with my back although I think an x-ray would have done more give me more of an idea or given him more of an idea so I've been to the doctors since then I've seen nurses, I've seen quite a few different doctors, I had health checkups. And I get a health checkup every year, and I mention it every single year to the person that gives me the, the, head, the health checkup about my lower back. And they always say the same thing Can you put your top back on, please? No, they always say the same thing. They say, lose some weight it's because you need to lose some weight have you tried losing some weight and I tried to explain to him that this my lower back issue was there when I was slim it's been with me it's gradually been getting worse over the last 20 years we tried losing some weight that seems to be the argument it's all like, what would they say if I didn't have a belly on me? Have you tried shaving your beard off? I mean, what is that what they'd say? And it's that mentality, isn't it, of you'll always, always find a reason. It's kind of always finding someone to blame. I find, always find, well, let's blame the patient. Yeah, it's your fault. And that's not my fault I've got a lower back issue it's not my fault I could do some stuff probably to help it I probably spend way too much time sitting down uh, I do do exercise and I do do weight lifting to help my lower back 
called Punch Bag, and I recently joined a gym. And like most people who join a gym, I haven't been, but at least I've joined it. It's a start, isn't it? I just did like, I know I'm moaning, but it's like, don't blame the patient, help the patient. Must be because of your belly. Have you tried cutting your toenails? Maybe that will help. Like, no. Well, yeah, I have tried cutting my toenails. I can't reach them. Maybe you need to lose some weight. <clears throat> to be honest, yeah, even, I mean, I used to do, I started doing martial arts, karate, well, kickboxing first and then karate when I was about, I don't know, 13. And I've done it, I've done quite a few different martial arts over the years and my flexibility's never been great. I'll be honest. I could kick head height, but my head height, and I've always been short. So I'm kind of kicking waist height or chest height with other people, you know. But I've never, never liked stretching. I mean, I probably never liked stretching, could never do the splits. Apart from when I was young. When I was a kid, I could, but once I kind of reached teenage years, I could not do the splits ever. Never have been able to. Because I just don't have that flexibility probably in my hips that some people do. And I don't think anything that I could have done would have made any difference. Because I spent years stretching and you know, properly doing it with people that were doing it that's not really a proper sentence, is it? I was doing it properly with people that were doing it properly. That's not really what I was trying to say. I was being observed and instructed on how to do it correctly. And I still could not reach that level. You know, even as at 13, I couldn't. And... When I was doing Taekwondo back in, I did it for a couple of years, I did it, and I stopped doing that about five years ago. I still couldn't, I could not do the splits. My flexibility for kicking was very low. And I couldn't kick at my head, head level anymore, like when I was a kid. The last time I was able to kick at my own head level was back in 2004 when I was doing Wing Chun Kung Fu. And I lost loads of weight while I was training doing that. Still had lower back problems. So it's, you know, not, not as bad as they are now. And I'm not just talking about that because I just want to moan about it. Oh, maybe I am. <laughs> maybe I am. Maybe I am. Maybe, baby. I'm just going to have a little drink. But yeah, I do wonder. It's, uh, I used to think it was maybe sciatica. But uh, I don't think it is. I think it's the, the doctor or the... the um, chiro... Uh, um, What's the name of the person? The gynecologist. He said that it was wear and tear, and basically, I tried to stimulate to loosen it up, um, but there's sort of very little he thought I'd really be able to do it was about flexibility try and get a bit more flexibility in my lower back and that was it so I do stretch it every day I stretch every day I'm always, always stretching my lower back I'm surprised I'm not 7 foot tall 
seriously I'm always stretching it even when I'm in bed I'm stretching it stretching it now as I speak oh because it gives me mild relief and when I say mild relief it's not agony sometimes it's it's very uncomfortable but it's at the moment it feels with my posture I'm sitting up fairly straight in the chair and uh, yeah so now I started off talking about what I'm doing let me tell you about the books I'm reading <clears throat> excuse me I'll let you know the audible books I've got these are the ones I've got um, I've got you your self-sabotage survival guide I've got mirroring hands that's Richard Hill and Ernest L Rossi the uh, your self-sabotage is Karen Berg other ones I've got here some I've read or listened to some I've not completely listened to uh, My Voice Will Go With You Teaching Tales of Milton Erickson that's been listened to The Power of Now Urquhart Toll uh, Loving What Is by Byron Katie so I have listened to most of that I think Although it's not saying that I've listened to it. What I Learned Losing a Million Dollars. That's another one. And I have listened to that. Uh, F It. The Ultimate Spiritual Way. Uh, dialectic. Uh, a Beginning. A Beginner's Guide to Dialectical Behaviour Therapy. By William E. Joyce. The next one is The Day That Turns Your Life Around by Jim Rohn. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I've read that. I've read a lot of these, but this is not all coming up as 100% read for some reason. The Magic of Thinking Big by David J. Schwartz. Um, pretty I'm sure I've read all of that I've read these as books as well in the past but these were audio books uh, then there's the ultimate Zig Ziglar library the ultimate Jim Rohn library I love Jim Rohn I love Zig Ziglar but I love Jim Rohn more and that's 100% read it says there then, um, yeah, a couple of other bits. Reality is plastic. The art of impromptu hypnosis. So they're they're the ones all downloaded. Ah, oh, that's weird. Oh, so let's have a look at my books, shall we? Come on, let's have a look at my books. Where's the books? Books, okay. Let's see what books I've got. It's a library. See all of your books. So some of these books are from the... Um, uh, some of these books I own, like I bought years ago. Uh, Kindle books, this is. These are the Kindle books. And some of them are part of the um, Kindle Unlimited, where you can just read loads of books. The only problem with that is the selection isn't, although there's loads to choose from, they're not 
necessarily top of the list of books if that makes sense if you want to read the most popular books they're the ones that they charge for they don't seem to include them in the Kindle Unlimited which I find is a bit a bit out of order so if I sort by collection collection no I'll just leave it as that all downloaded all filter now I'll just, read, I'll just give you some of the nine of them are Kindle Unlimited so I've got Anxiety Management by Mike Mitchell I've read 13% of that Positive Thinking by Robert Norman apparently I've read 5% of that Inside Out by Jenny Haywood Then there's Robert McNeely, which is Clinical Applications of Ericksonian Hypnosis um, After Trauma. There's My Voice Will Go With You, The Teaching Charles of Mitch Mil Milton H. Erickson. Irvin Yellum, I'm Calling the Police. And I've got one called Strictly Bipolar by Darian Leader. In Two Minds by Daniel Torb something. There's a little tick next to it, so it's blocking the name. It's uh, 50 short poems or so short poems. I guess it's a number. And I've got another one here. How to Hypnotise Anyone Confessions of a Rogue Hypnotist So I've not read that um, I've got another book here It's called Not About Being Good That's a Buddhist book uh, Another one The Ten Pillars of Buddhism By Sangharajta there's the a life inspire something the Dalai Lama then there's a Sigmund Freud book dream psychology psychoanalysis for beginners then I've got what is the Sangha by Sangharajta I've got the Dharmapada the way of truth by Sankarajita. I've got a puja book, which is a book of Buddhist rituals. Um, what is Dharma? What is the Dharma by Sankarajita? What is the Buddha by Sankarajita? So these books here, these are ones that I own, that I bought a few years back. I've got Hypnosis, a Comprehensive Guide by Ted James. I've got um, so these I think I've got these in uh, human form as well on my bookshelf uh, I've definitely got this next one it's Handbook of Hypnotic Suggestions and Metaphors or Metaphors by Dr. Croydon Hammond or Corridon Corridon Hammond PhD and I've got that in uh, hardback. It's a big old book. But I've also got it on Kindle as well. So next, let's have a look. Games People Play. It's a great book. I've got that in human form as well, I think. Eric Byrne. Or should we say, oh, what's the opposite to digital? that word analog yeah so I've got them in analog, analog form so people's games people play Eric Byrne I'm okay you're okay 
Douglas Thomas A. something Harris, I think. What do you say after you say hello, Eric Byrne? Then I've got three books by Catherine Holden. The Ego States. Scripts, 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 scripts. And lastly, Strokes and Hungers. So they're psychotherapy books, I'm pretty sure. Oh, this is interesting. I didn't know I had that. Um, I've got The Buddhist Noble Eightfold Path by Sangharachita. I've got Trance Work by Michael D. Yapko. And there's, I think I've got that in analog. Uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Then another one. The Universe didn't doesn't give a flying F about you, Johnny Trait or something. Declutter. So this is 33 easy and quick ways to declutter your life or whatever. Then I got Helpless. A true story by Rosie Lou something. Oh, I didn't know I had these books. Wow. I wonder how long I've had these for. Uh, the Meditation Transformation. Don't remember buying that. That's uh, Jennifer, Jennifer something. And then I've got Your Little Steps to Self-Confidence for Life by Paul, Paul Bailey. And then another one, This is Brilliant. Okay. That's a bit of a... 10 brilliant chapters from 10 brilliant books. So... Pretty good uh, name for a book, isn't it? This is brilliant. How to transform your life. Geshe Gosang Gyatso. I could tell you about him. He's He was my first... Not my first Buddhist teacher, because I never met him. But I used to read his books back in the early 90s. And I've still got, I think, a couple of his books here think so and I love them they're very very organized very organized books and I quite like that actually it was uh, yeah quite like it so mindfulness for anxiety relief Mike Mitchell as a man thinketh James Allen I've got quite a few books here, I didn't realise. I forgot about all these. Uh, abuse, emotional abuse, how to recognise and overcome abuse. Uh, that's Louise R. Allen. Nikola Tesla, uh, there's a book about him. How to write a novel the easy way using the pulp fiction method to write better novels. Jim Drive. Oh, okay. 35 Steps to Loving Yourself. Slim Fatty. <laughs> I can't believe that's the name of the person. 35 Steps to Loving Yourself. Slim Fatty. It's actually spelled S-L-I-M-P-H-A-T-T-Y. And that's the name of the author. I don't know it's I guess it's like a an in joke or something with the author um, it's not can't be the real name surely motivational and inspirational success quotes every accomplishment starts with the decision to try that's by Emily Welch I think the next one is 
a real life recovery, dear anxiety, this is my life. Where did these books come from? Are you, am I sure these are, are these my books? They are my books. These are books that I've actually paid for in the past and I don't remember them. Wow. So I've got self-hypnosis. It's another one. So that, um, Dear Anxiety, This Is My Life, John Crawford. How, this one is self-hypnosis, How to Self-Hypnotize for Beginners or something. Ryan Cooper. How to Eliminate Negative Thoughts and Emotions with One Simple but Powerful Technique. Again, I don't remember that one. Confidence. How to Overcome Your Limiting Life Beliefs and Achieve Your Goals by Martin Meadows. And then another one here, 200 Motivational and Inspirational Quotes that Will Inspire Your Success. And there's another one. I won't read that title because it's quite negative, actually. Very negative. The One Minute Gratitude Journal, Brenda Nathan. The next one's called Magic Intentions. Uh, five Energized Affirmations, Don Trey. And then the next one is The Art of Saying No with Grace and Respect. Learn how to say no can improve. Learn how saying no can improve your relationships and help you feel better. Then the next one, Subconscious Mind Power. How to use the hidden power of your subconscious mind, James Thompson. I don't remember any of these, seriously. Achieving Balance. A Simple Book That Will Change Your Life by Alan Willis. Oh, this is interesting. I don't know how this got on there. I think someone must have bought this for me. Don't Give Your Work Away for Free. <laughs> An ebook by... Uh, Thadrons Cooper or Thadras Cooper okay and this one is Eight Reasons Your Life Matters by John Herrick so I've got an Amazon best selling one this says it tequila tea bags okay I don't remember that and this one is Expert YouTube Video Marketing Strategy. Video SEO Methods to Grow Your Business or Brand Online. So this must be when I was sort of into YouTube. So that's a long time that I was kind of really focusing on YouTube. And the Golden Saying of Epictetus or, or Epic. Epic Epictetus, Epictetus, I think. I don't know how you'd pronounce that. And then there's another one, Coping with Bipolar Disorder, A Guide to Living with Manic Depression, Steve Jones, Peter Haywood and Dominic Lamb. And then there's another one, How to Hypnotise Anyone. <laughs> and then uh, there's another one sleep cure your insomnia improve your health and feel better now and then the next one is the mindfulness solution for intense emotions take control of borderline personality disorder with DBT and this I don't remember these some of these dare the new way to end anxiety and stop panic attacks. 
Dialectical Behaviour Therapy Workbook. That's uh, that's it. CBT Essentials and Fundamentals. The Diploma in Clinical Hypnotherapy and NLP. And five more. 70 proven hypnosis scripts. Three, uh, the courage to be disliked. How to free yourself, change your life and achieve real happiness. Uh, this one is quick cheats for writing with dragon. Hidden tricks to help you dictate your book and work anywhere and set your words free with speech recognition. And the last two, Collected Lectures and Other Papers by Ergen Sangarajta and Diary of a Bipolar. And this is, I can't read the bit there, A Journey into one man's life of extremes and that's George Isos or ISO yeah I think it's ISOE so how many of those are Kindle Unlimited one two three four five six seven eight nine Nine. Yeah. To download it all. Downloaded. So there's nine out of those. How many all together? Three, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77 so 77 books all in all and 9 of those are Kindle Unlimited which means I don't own them 76 did I say so that's um, 67 yeah 67 so there's 67 books that I've got on the Kindle that I've actually purchased. Wow. How unusual. Ah. Ding, 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 ding. So I've already got that book. Buy. Loving what is, 
save 92% print list is £12.99 and I can buy it for 99 pence that's not bad is it it'd be so easy wouldn't it to just go and buy and buy and buy and end up well actually yeah they're only 99 pence each but I just bought 400 well I couldn't do that because I don't have 400 pounds but you know what I mean I'm going to add it to my list Future Feelings, bestsellers, 80 Kindle books for £1 each. Dumped, dumped. The thing is, the ones they're selling for £1 each are also free to what free to read on un Kindle Unlimited, which kind of defeats the point, really because I can just read them there you know what I mean I wonder how many other how to sue the art of fate wow that's interesting vagus nerve the complete guide to vagus nerve the Complete Guide to Vagus Nerve Stimulation, Emotional Intelligence, Anger Management and Self-Hypnosis for Overcome Anxiety, Depression and Chronic Illness. My only problem with that is the... Oh, it's available for, uh, to read for Unlimited. My only problem is that it's actually the, the bad grammar <laughs> it's terrible isn't it I'm not an expert but the complete guide to vagus nerve or vagus nerve stimulation emotional intelligence anger management and self hypnosis this next bit for overcome anxiety depression and chronic illness It should be to overcome anxiety, depression and chronic illness. So, yeah, I might not read it just because of that. It's terrible, isn't it? Hypnosis. Richard Nongard's big book of hypnosis scripts. So read, and get that to read it for free as well. Wow, I've got that. Hypno There's not a lot of hypnosis books on Kindle, really. Which is not in the sense of some of the older books, you know, some of the um, classic. Oh, there's a few, there's a few, but not, not the ones that I would... Deep sleep. I'm saying that and now I'm finding stuff. Nope, that's ridiculous. This, that's uh, some of this stuff that I see is like, wow. It's almost, uh, well, now this is interesting. Uh, the hypnotic gastric band. And there's another one. What is this? Unlimited, I can read on there. Breaking barriers with hypnosis and hypnotherapy. When you believe you grasp the destiny of your own creation, you write your own screenplay. You're powerful, you're magical, you're worthy of the life that you desire. 
like our ancient ancestors before us, we all have our joys, struggles, breakthroughs and paths that we share with one another. This is what connects us. This is what keeps us strong. And that and that what this beautiful book imparts. Again, bad grammar. And it was we are really with it then. This is what keeps us strong and that what this beautiful book imparts. The knowledge on how to successfully harness the power of your subconscious mind. The world we live transforms more and more digitally and as it happens we continue to become more secluded and isolated which in turn evokes our fears, phobias and insecurities. Thus digital transformation needs emotional transformation which is possible with the help of hypnosis and a hypnotherapist. No matter if you are finding it hard to give up on something you're addicted to or you have trouble guiding your brain to follow a diet plan, whether you are having anger issues or you are being insecure about your partner, the book covers all the nitty gritties of such issues and helps you turn into a person that you are always wanted, that you are always wanted to be a successful and individual man or woman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It might be a really good book and it's clearly, you know, very positive and stuff. I just, um, I wonder about that. Mind you, because it's Kindle, because I'm not sure how well I would be able to write. Because I suppose writing a book, if you write how you speak, mine might be like really ridiculously... uh, un... um, What's the word? Un... Un something. A gra- grammatic, grammatical. <laughs> ah. Bedtime stories, the hypnosis... Self-hypnosis as you read. Let's have a look at that. Change your life as you read with powerful self-hypnosis scripts from a proven source. Let go of the baby weight. Get over your ex. Relieve social anxiety. Manifest a new job. Eat less chocolate. No, no. These are just a few of the eyes open hypnosis scripts included in this amazing volume from Forbes, Robbins Blair, the author of the best-selling Instant Self-Hypnosis, How to Hypnotize Yourself with Your Eyes Open. This original easy-to-use technique allows you to put yourself into an hypnotic trance and improve your life without ever needing to put the book down. But you're going to have to put it down at some point, aren't you? You can't carry it around everywhere you go. What are you going to do in a shower? You remain aware at all times during the session and return gently to everyday consciousness. You never memorise or record anything unlike most of the other techniques. So it says here, 42 reader requested scripts. The scripts featured in this book came at the request of readers and fans of Mr. Blair's previous books. This collection includes four hypnotic inductions, advanced techniques and dozens of scripts you asked for. Okay. 
It's got a list of things. No self-hypnosis scripts are equal. Some hypnotism books these days offer free hypnosis scripts. So here we go. However, you have to ask yourself some questions. Who wrote them? Are they professionals who have worked for years in the field? Even more, do the scripts really work? So, don't trust people to do things for free. Mm. Script, take and tr trust people that want your money. Take control of your life now. Choose now to change your habits and take charge of your life with the ease of this breakthrough self-hypnosis method and the power of these one-of-a-kind scripts. Your new life changes could be only minutes away. Yeah. Close your eyes, get free. Is that the same one I was just reading? No. Oh, this is good. It's got this is a nice review here. Grace personally helped me to overcome a severe fear of flying that left me crying, shaking, and often simply unable to travel for nearly twenty years. In her new book, Grace unlocks the transformative power of hypnosis for people across the planet, debunking myths and giving readers the resources they need to enact real, lasting change in their lives. Liz Moody, that's the name of the person, food editor at Mind Body Green, writer, photographer, recipe developer, creator of Eat Well Europe. It's, yeah, cool. And that, that book's called Close Your Eyes, Get Free. You can buy it for £3.99 on uh, Amazon or Kindle. Yeah, okay. I think that's probably enough. I've slightly gone over again. I always seem to go over. I was quite surprised at how many books I've got. Yeah. See all your books. Yeah, I'm quite surprised at that. Never mind. Well, that's good, isn't it? It's a good thing. I have to start looking at them. I'm trying to get organised. Trying to get a little bit more organised. And look through what I've got. Come up with some, you know, just get some fresh ideas. Remind me of what I already know. You know, that kind of stuff. Because we never stop learning. We're always learning. It's just, I think when we focus and purposefully learn, then we're learning what we want to learn. We're kind of going in the direction, perhaps, that you want to go. Because right? we're always absorbing new stuff, aren't we? Because, let's face it, the human brain is amazing amazing thing so I'm going to end this recording I want to thank you for listening I hope I was boring enough and I will speak to you next time probably see speak to you again tomorrow so thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy Lots of love. Bye.